Hi, Michael Hurwitz here for CreativeCow.net with a tutorial on creating a particle ball with random 3D motion using the data operator in 3ds Max 2014. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create a particle flow. Particle Systems, PF Source, and just drag that out right here and then right click. Then go to the Modify tab and Particle View. So here we have our standard beginning particle flow. The first thing I'm going to do is to add a spin operator to that and put it right under the rotation operator. Then under that I'm going to add the data operator. Now I'm selecting the data operator and going to edit data flow. So here we have our empty data flow. And as usual, I'm going to need an input and an output. So I'll put an input standard and an output standard. And what I'm going to bring in is the rotation from the spin operator. So right now this is set to position. I'm going to set it to rotation. And instead of the Euler angles, I'm going to choose axis. Now we actually could just tie these together right now. Let's give this a try in fact and see what we get. So we're actually already getting a very small particle ball there. So this is already essentially the effect that we want. It's a particle ball with random 3D motion on the surface of it. However, it's very small. So we're going to put in another operator so that we can play with the size, make it larger. So first I'm going to right click on this connector here to delete that. Then I'm going to add a function. And in the function operator, I'll eliminate the second operand. And then I'll connect this one to here. I'm going to change the function to identity. That changes this from a real to a vector output. Drag this down a little bit. And connect those up. Now right now, this doesn't change anything. This is just identity. What comes in goes out. However, it gives us this post factor. Right now that's set to 1, so it doesn't change anything. But I can set that to say 10. And now our particle ball will be 10 times as big. And if I up this, we get a bigger particle ball. So one other thing I'm going to do is expose this control so that we don't have to come into the data flow to look at it. Just right click here and go to expose. It asks me what I want to expose. It's the post factor. And here, give it a label. I'll just call this size. And then click Add. And then Close. Now I can get completely out of this flow. And when I've got this data operator selected, I've got a size spinner right here. and that controls the size of the particle ball. So let's try rendering this. I'm going to see what shape I have here first. I'm going to try a sphere. So let's just try a single frame render to start. So I'd rather have smaller spheres so we can see the movement better. 
So here we have size 10. Let's try size 1. All right. I'll just zoom in a little bit more. Okay, I'll go to render setup, make it a little larger. And I'm just naming that particle ball. I'll render as AVI. MPEG and quality 100. And all the frames from 0 to 100. And that's what we get. So the way this works is this. Let's take a look at this rotation axis data here. I'm going to right click here and show data. So here we have a lot of spin vectors. These are groups of three numbers. And what we're doing is we're taking those spin vectors and outputting them as position vectors. So they started out being data determining how the particle would spin, but we output it as data determining where the particle would be in space. So that's a good example of the kind of thing you can do with the data operator. You can take data from one operator and use it in a completely different operator in a way that was never originally intended, but it might have a pleasing result. So I hope this has been interesting and useful, and thanks for tuning in.